This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. We've got Kian Blakey here, aka Master Diamond YGO. I'll put a link down in the description to his channel so you can go ahead and check that out if you want to. He's been holding the fort for BA for quite some time now and he messaged me and he, uh, he wanted to show me he'd done really, really well at the UK extravaganza. So uh, a brief chance to introduce yourself if you like. Like I said, my name is Kian. Uh, I've been playing Burning Abyss for around about two years now, I think. Back in the eternal format, recently moved on to trap BA, uh, and it's just done me really well today. Yeah, you got yourself a uh, what? What place did you finish? Eighth place. Eighth just place. before the cutoff. Nice, nice. That's always good. And uh, j I've got your matchups here. Uh, I'll just run through them real quick. Uh, we can have a quick talk about those a bit later on. So round one, uh, you lost to Dragonling two one. Uh, a draw with Invoke Dog Shadol round two. Uh, and then it was wins every round after, uh, Invoke Shadol, Crusadia, Trap BA, Mech Knight, and Prank Kids. It was indeed. Um, so, quick run through. Round one was against Jake Quincy. Yeah. Uh, very strong player. I just didn't have enough uh, game three, so he just took it. Yeah. Uh, round two, my opponent had re really bad connections, so it took a lot longer to play the game, which ended up in a draw. Yeah. Uh, third round, Invoke uh, Shadol uh, is more of a clean sweep. Uh, Crusadia, it was a Dragonlink variant where it brings back to old Rev's cards uh, when he did the Sealed Only series. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more or less that deck. Um, put me off guard uh, going second game two, but ended up to snuff it out. Uh, then round five was a mirror match. Uh, the reason why I won is because I Dragoon and I remembered my Skarm searches. <laughs> um, round 6 was against pure Mech Knight, I believe. Uh, a bit scary, but I just about snuffed it out. Uh, then round 7 was Plank Kids. My opponent was kind of tired, kind of jaded from the event. So he made a few misplays and it just it opened the floodgates for Dante to just go right in there. Excellent. So uh, you started off a bit rough, uh, as you briefed me on just before this. Uh, obviously, playing Quincy early on is always going to be a tough one. And then to get that draw after that can, can really throw you off guard. So you've done very, very well to go on and smash the rest of your game. So uh, a very big well done on that front. And how hard it can be to get your head back into things and, and get things rolling again. Mm. Thank you for that. No problem. So, um, right, let's go through the deck list anyway. We'll give you a chance to discuss if there's anything you want to... Uh, talk about in particular. So uh, we start off with Absolute uh, King Backjack. Uh, I think that's pretty standard in, in the Trap BA builds, is it not? Yes. If you're playing as many traps as I am, you need to be playing this card. I was playing two at one point, going back about a format and a half ago. Uh, but the one of is perfect. You don't need more than that. Yep. Uh, okay, cool. So we've then got our, uh, I'll say our BAs and our, our kind of honorary BAs. Um, it's actually quite a big package, which makes me happy here because we don't see this very much anymore. So we've got one Alec, uh, one Barbar, one Calcab, two Seer, uh, we've got two Farfa, three Rhino, three Graf, uh, one Limic, uh, two Skarm, and then of course, triple Tour Guide. So, uh, talk us through that because this is quite a big lineup for, compared to what we see in a lot of modern BA lists. So, oh, go through the bad BAs first. So, we've got Alec, Barba, Libic, and Calcab. Uh, they all serve a purpose in the different situations they're good in. Uh, Barba is there to out Dragoon because if you go Chobini, target uh, Seer on your field and send Barba, that Seer becomes 3 4 and can just beat over uh, Dragoon. <laughs> uh, Alec is there for it's. It's kind of the worst one out of them all, uh, but it can come up in certain situations where you can chain back your own Dante if you mill that off of uh, Dante and then go chilling link one graph chink to uh, Alec target your own Dante because mm -hmm. you can't be ashed there. Um, Cal Cap is very strong in control matchups, uh, just bouncing the traps every turn, 
just on your turn and your opponent's turn can just give you so much more advantage and so much more tempo than your opponent. Mm -hmm. I mean, Libic, I'd say it's, it's the best out of the bad ones, just to make sure you keep on getting your cards on your field. Didn't come up too much today, um, but you kind of need to play Libic to extend through certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, going on to the better ones, which are the two ofs. Two Seer is the ideal ratio. You don't want to play C. Uh, you don't want to play three because if you open it, your whole turn just slows down unless you open up Tour Guide. Because that C, you want to use its effect in Grave, and you can't do that if you hard open it. Yeah. Um, Farfa's nice for just for removal options. A uh, two is fine. I cited the second one out once or twice, but a uh, two is perfect. Then two Scarm. I really want to play three, but two is optimal. Uh, even just adding it back with Dante, summoning it back with Seer, just keep on looping it. Your turn and your opponent's turn. It just gives you so much advantage, and you can. Tour guy by itself is an OTK. Yeah. Uh, then going on to the normal summons, free graph, mandatory. If you're not playing free graph, you should be playing Burn Abyss. <laughs> free Rhino is basically any, it's a free extra copies of any BA in your deck or backjack. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives you a really strong versatility. And it's also very nice where you normal summon it and your special BA. The BA won't die because Rhino keeps it alive. And then, of course, the best girl, uh, Tour Guide. Um, one card combo to make three interruptions, four interruptions in mm -hmm. some cases. Absolutely bonkers card. Yeah, of course you need to play three of that card. No question about that. A hundred percent. Okay, cool. Uh, any more you want to say on the actual BAs themselves before we move on? Uh, not necessarily. Just this uh, lineup is more or less it's known to be optimal for 50 card list. It's it does what it does, and it does it well. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got Red Eyes and Dark Magician. Uh, I'm sure I don't need to explain that. Um, triple Prosperity. How are you finding this in terms of like utility and stuff? Because your your extra deck looks like it's a lot of utility cards. So uh, do do you ever find that that causes you issues, or you know, talk talk me through it? So the only time Prosperity causes me issues is when I'm being brain dead and I forget I banish something but prosperity should be worth three times the amount it is right now it is insane just giving you versatility of looking at the top three cards sometimes top, even top six if you need to and just picking any card you want for mm -hmm. no drawback other than you, you probably can't kill your opponent that turn uh, like today I prosperity into order and order won me the game it's insane yeah I think sometimes it's overlooked as well, and it, I, I fall into this trap as well, where you look at it and compare it to, say, Extravagance, and you're like, oh, you know, but I can draw two cards or whatever, but uh, I think the fact that you get to pick the card is the real strength here, especially if you're missing, like, one key piece or one card that gets your entire thing going. I can see the uh, definitely the benefits of using that instead. Oh, yeah, just go in six cards deep into your deck for any sort of side pieces. So if you go in first... Uh, you look at the side deck. If you see that judgment, you can just win because that stops there uh, evenly matched, which then means that we can't kill you that turn, which then you just start snowballing after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's certainly a very strong card. You can see exactly why. I mean, most decks are playing it at the moment, aren't they? Certainly, if they can, uh, they're putting it in there. Yeah. So that makes complete sense. Um, okay. Then only one more spell card in the main deck. Uh, very, very tight marker there. It's a shame we can't have Sekka's Light, but there you go. Um, Red Eyes Fusion. Um, Dragoon is Dragoon. I'm sure we don't really need to elaborate on that. Card is, is bonkers. It's extra strong at the moment, I feel, as well. Uh, in past formats, I think the other decks that could make stuff could do so much. The Dragoon was more of a hindrance than a help, having the bricks in there. But I think with the with the slower format that we're in, much more back row heavy, I think the Dragoon's a great call. So, uh, And I'm sure you, you, you agree with that sentiment considering you're playing it. So, funny enough, in this list you can just cut Dragoon, but it means you have to play out your skin every single game. Mm -hmm. Dragoon is more as a crutch, which can just help and just win on its own. Mm -hmm. But I must say, um, out of the seven rounds I played today, at least five of them I opened up one of uh, Dark Magician or Red Eyes in a game, <laughs> uh, and once I opened up both. So, Jeez. Yeah, that's the punishment. Games. 
But I guess in a deck like this, it's very, very easy to get two bodies on board. So the counter to that is that if you don't open the, you know, the, the cards I'm giving, you've got a 50 card deck. At least mathematically, it should be a bit harder to open uh, any of the pieces. But we all know that that's never how it bloody works. But in theory, you know, the fact that you can just get two bodies on board and you've got an instant negate on the field plus a gazillion trap cards, you should be in a good place from there if you if that's what you really need to go for. Yeah, especially since that if you're discarding a Skarm, discarding a Graph, discarding a Batcheck, discarding a Rhino, you're getting so much advantage off that discard from mm -hmm. a Dragoon. So you're going uh, one for one with advantage. So one of their cards for your, one of your cards in hand, that card then can get another two, maybe three more in advantage over the next turn and a half. Mm -hmm. So just the amount of advantage you can gain from just punishing your opponent for playing into things is insane. Mm, mm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, for sure. Okay, let's move on to the trap lineup. Let's have a look what we got here. So, uh, Fiend Griefin, uh, Loki, such a cool card. I love this card. Uh, How has it been for you? Absolutely amazing. The coolest thing ever is going end phase Fiend Griefin, shuffle back, sank which they need in Grave. So, against Invoked uh, Domatica Shadow, shuffle the back for App Clone, grab a Skarm, go Tour Guide. Then go Dragoon, Beatrice, Verte game. It's yeah. always fun. <laughs> Good old Fiend Griefin. Uh, just low-key broken. Low-key broken. Uh, Ice Dragon's Prison. Uh, what do we say about this card? This is insane. Absolutely insane. I'm just going to say, it, I want to say it's the best normal trap of the format by far. Yeah. It just is. Just instant blowout. Like, as someone who's been playing Eldritch the last few weeks, this is the biggest nightmare in the world. This card is just, like, fuck this card. It's so horrible to play against, but it, it's so good. I mean, there's so many decks that you just need to play it, I think. Uh, which, again, I'm sure you agree with that based on what you've said there. Just really solid card. Oh, yeah, and you don't even really need to banish your opponent's cards. You can just summon a guy to your field, link mm -hmm. it off, make Dragoon. Yeah, like, at worst, it's, it's a reborn, right? And then at best, it's like blow out your opponent. Yeah. So like, if you have uh, IDP on your field and Dynamiscus and Grave, go end phase IDP something, chain it to Dynamiscus. Now you have Dragoon. Yeah. It's just that easy sometimes. Spicy, spicy. We like it. That's good. Uh, okay, Imperial Order. Uh, I, I, I'm sure we don't really need to comment on this. It's a free win. Um, Karma yeah, Cup against. Do you want to go back yeah, to him? I was going to say, again, yeah, any fusion deck, you drop this with any sort of other interaction, you just win. Yeah. It is just insane. There's a reason it's at one. The reason it was bloody impossible to use for so long. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it's a dumb card. It's like, at the very least, it should be in, in every side deck almost. That's how it feels. Yeah. Uh, Karma Cut here. So Karma Cut, I love this. As an avid Duel Links player, seeing this being played in the, the actual TCG is nice because it's, it's dummy good in that. So how's it been for you? Uh, so I like to loop in the Dynamiscals with this because they serve the same purpose, more or less. Just Karma Cut is, uh, it's for different situations. Uh, Karma Cut's nice. It's probably, I want to say it's the weakest trap out of my lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, but just having the, possibility of having your opponent having a Eldritch Golden Lord on field and in grave just karma cutting one of them away and it banishes a whole all of them in the grave mm -hmm. and they just play two so they just that is you well, that's a Eldritch ending locked off now mm -hmm. and then Dynamiscus just clears any threats against Prankis clear the normal summon sometimes that is just enough it's mad yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, I can definitely appreciate the advantage. I guess it kind of, it's a pseudo Ice Dragon's Prison in that sense, isn't it? Like, um, you know, just sort of like a blowout against the right decks at the right times. Yeah, and a lot of people see this as a two for one, but a lot of the time you're going uh, to, oh, you're, they're going, uh, it's like a one for one, maybe sometimes a zero for one, because if you're discarding a Rhino, Rhino can get you a Skarm, which can get you a Tour Guide, so that's your card back. Can go for a bat jack which can get you another trap and also stack your deck so that's an extra like two cards which you know of mm -hmm. so just the amount of advantage like this whole deck is just advantage dot deck advantage dot deck you heard it here first the new name 
<laughs> okay. Uh, needle ceiling. Uh, this is an interesting one, seeing this being played. Once again, old school cards creeping back into the format. How has it been for you? Uh, so for a long time, I didn't play it. Um, then the first game I played with it, I'm like, oh, so this is what I've been missing out on. Okay. Uh, at one point, uh, this wasn't in this tournament, but I think the last extravaganza, uh, I was going against Dino. He had like double UCT Zeus, uh, Rex, and a Pentastag. Mm-hmm. I set Batchjack. He kills my Batchjack. I then see a tour guide and a needle ceiling. In his battle phase, it just clears whole field. Normal summon tour guide and just win. <laughs> it's so funny. Just a free win, and it's but searchable yeah, it's, in this. Yeah, it's searchable. It's uh, it doesn't have a restriction of you have to use it on the summon like the torrential. Um, so a lot of the time, it it is a lot more easier to trigger and to use, mm-hmm. especially when you're going against invoke decks where they have meltdown. Uh, torrential's never getting used in that, more or less. Yeah, but needle ceiling will just win you them games. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a, it's certainly an interesting card. It is, like I said, always nice to see those creeping back in, uh, those older cards. Um, right next up, we got Paleozoic Dynamiscus. So talk to us about this one. Well, two for one spot for me, but it's more or less a one for one, maybe a zero point five for one. You're going mad plus, and it also is a recursive body, which just activate any of your traps, summon it out, make Link Spider, now you have an effect monster to go into Verte, into Trisbana, into uh, Access Code Talker. It's all you really want from a spot removal card. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, okay, Solemns. So we've got Triple Strike in here. Uh, I've noticed this creeping in a little bit more again in the game, so what's this been doing for you in the in the sort of current format? So oh, going first, it's um, it's a absolute win against Prank Kids because if you strike the summon of their Prank Kids monster, they go into a like when we make um, Meow Meow, you strike that, uh, their Prank Kids just doesn't trigger, so they can't play after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the main use for strike is actually going second. Okay. So against full combo board, if you have Needle Ceiling plus Strike, it just clears the field no matter what. Because there's not many things that can change his spell speed tree. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So they, they basically can't do anything about it. You flip needle ceiling, they try monster negate, you go strike, and then it's GG. Yeah, just like against Crusader today, uh, their board was Savage, number 38, Rephlasia, and Steel. Mm. Just set a monster, just in case he links one off or something like that. Uh, set four traps, past turn, during... Uh, he goes into battle phase straight away. Like, okay, battle phase, needle ceiling. Chain Savage, Chain Strike, clears everything, and he has no resources at that point. And you're going to outgrind them from there nice and easy with this deck. Oh, it this deck cannot lose in a grinding game. It cannot. <laughs> it's a strong statement. It's a very strong statement. But I'll trust, I'll trust your deck, judgment on that one. This deck can outgrind any deck as long as you don't get hit with like a random call by or... Get hit with random bits of interaction, which just messes up your loops. Yeah. But if your loops are going strong, you're outgrinding your opponent. Interesting. Um, okay. Triple Torrential. Uh, so, how are you finding this? Very strong. It's a f- free board wipe. It gets prank kids a lot of the time. My end board is Verte, Beatrice, Dragoon. On my normal summer, I just go Torrential. I don't care about my Beatrice and Verte stay on the field. Beatrice already sent her card. She's done her job. Mm-hmm. Verte's done his job summoning Dragoon, and Dragoon's going nowhere. Yeah. So I see her as a one for one, not a three for one. And in a lot of situations, just like I said with Needle Ceiling, just going Chain One, uh, Torrential, they attempt to negate Chain Free Strike. It is just game against a lot of decks. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, again another one of these. Kind of, I'm I'm such a sucker for this, and I've said it before. In this, seeing old school cards coming back into play makes me so happy. I remember once upon a time it was like Trenchall's mandatory in every deck, and suddenly everyone's playing it again. So it's beautiful to see, um, see it getting some love again. Uh, now we just need an ulti printing, really. Nice ulti Trenchall would be. Whoa. I really want the original ultras. That's 
that is the pinnacle of Rarity for a card <laughs> for me. Well, let's let's wait and see. Let's wait and see because if they come out with ulties, they could look pretty nice, you know. If they do them right, anyway. Yeah, oh yeah, if it looks good, then of course it's gonna be absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Right, sweet. Uh, okay, trap trick. Uh, I don't really think we need to say much about this. It just gives you three extra copies of any traps you need, except from strike and order. But yeah, it's. It gives you so much more versatility where if you have trap trick, you don't just have a trap, you have any of your traps. Yeah. Uh, a little the downside is you can't activate traps after you use this apart from one, which mm-hmm. is a bit sad, but it's it's whatever. You're not be using this at the end of using your traps. Yeah, you set up for the next turn or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, right. We'll cover the extra deck first and then we'll go on to the side afterwards. So... Um, the order here is gone and it's like, it's like sword itself. So, um, I think the simplest way to do this would be, uh, so we've got Grape Dante here, um, which obviously goes with the rest of our BA package. So we'll talk through the BA package. We've got, uh, Grape Dante, which a lot of people don't play. So we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Beatrice, uh, two Dante and one Cherubini. So, uh, talk me through those. And in particular, I'd like to hear about using, uh, the fusion Dante. So, uh, two Dante is kind of, it, it's just known to be optimal at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to play like really slow with Fire Lake and just try and be funny, you can play three, I guess. But if you want to be competitive with a deck, just play two. Beatrice, mandatory. Uh, Cherubini, you could cut depending on the format. Um, I know that a format and a half ago, you didn't really need to play Cherubini. It was more of a extra option if you wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a strong card, don't get me wrong, but it's just... It's not mandatory. And then Purple Dante. Uh, I summoned it once and it was fantastic. Just drawing about four cards off of it. And also triggering all of your BAs. Most of the time Seer to bring back the normal Dante. Mm -hmm. It's mad. I think it's one of them cards where there's certain formats like Once Upon a Time. uh, Back when I last played BA actually I would say. At any kind of like competitive events or whatever. One of the issues with Dante was that like Striker was around and stuff like that. So they had a lot of ways to out... Beatrice without killing her. Um, but whenever they did, whenever they made the mistake of gambling on you not having it, I always found the Fusion Dante to be incredibly strong. Oh, in any sort of control matchup, if they trigger Beatrice, you, that Dante is going to win you the game. Yeah. yeah in okay. most cases, if you're summoning Purple Dante, I want to say 95% of the time, you're going to win that match. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably agree with that from, even from back then, my experience was that it was, uh, very much a blowout card if they, if they didn't know what they were doing and they made that mistake. So yeah, I can see that. And, um, yeah, it's good to see it getting some play. Uh, okay. So we got, uh, we'll say Dragoon and we'll say Predapan Vert Anaconda now. Again, we, we can talk about them to no end. There's not much point. So let's scoot along. So we've got Zeus. Uh, Zeus is Zeus. Um, how often did this come up? Basically, every time I went second, make Fortune Tune, summon Zeus, they can't do anything. The only time they can actually interrupt that is if they negate the effect of Zeus, which doesn't happen too often, or strike the summon of uh, Zeus. Yeah. it's This card wins so many games off its own back, and the reason why it does is moving on to number 49, Fortune Tune. That is the MVP of the extra deck. Yeah. Dante's cool and all, but Fortune Tune, this little blue bird is the key to success. Okay, talk to me. Talk to me about it. So, uh, say, Plank Kids. You summon two Burning Abyss. If you don't trigger uh, Butler, you make this. What this does is, it can't be targeted. If you restore a battle card effect and just detach a material from, it is, from itself instead, mm-hmm. which isn't once per turn and doesn't activate. Okay. Uh, so if you summon this, you go Battle Phase, attack, they attempt to Butler. Well, okay, I'm just going to detach a Farfa. Uh, proceed to battle, uh, do it again. Okay, I'm just going to detach another card. Proceed to battle, attack sank in defense. Main phase two, overlay onto downward, overlay into Zeus, wipe the field. GG. Uh, <laughs> normal summon tour guide, smile. <laughs> yeah, that stage, you, you're good. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I was looking at the downward magician and wondering this is a card that wasn't around the the time when I came back into the game, so I kind of missed a step on that one. So interesting to know that that's what that's primarily being used for. Um, 
And I assume that that is essentially it. You just sort of use it as a quick rank up option. Yeah, it gives you an extra uh, material in Zeus, which if you bring Dante back from Seer, you attack with Dante, overlay into downward, overlay into Zeus, white field, Dante effect, add back. It's just very strong. And then they're not winning from there. If, if, if they've overcommitted, they're done. They're done at that oh, yeah. stage. Home percent Okay, right. Links. We'll look through the rest of them now. So we've got um, Access Code Talker is Access Code Talker. It's, Never it's a win button. It. Really? Never summoned it. Never needed to. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Let's let's talk about outside of the tournament then. Um, does does this come up often for you in in kind of testing and stuff, or is it just by chance that, that it didn't come up today? Well, the truth, I've never summoned this card in about two and a half weeks. It's just there. Never summoned it. It's there as an option. Um, so the whole mentality with it is against control. You go Trisbana. You get any other monster going to access code, and then you have a big body just to attack and pop extra cards. Mm-hmm. But it never comes up because Dragoon does does a better job. Okay, that makes some sense. I agree with that. Okay, um, IP Mascarena. It's IP Mascarena. Uh, so IP and Unicorn are the backup. Um, if you hard open your Red Eyes Fusion and you. You know your opponent's on Ash. You hold it, go into IP and Beatrice. Because IP Beatrice is still a decent enough end board. Mm-hmm. That in itself is about two, three interruptions. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also very nice just to link off into IP and make a, a Trisbana, which can't be sure of a card effect. And you just laugh at your control opponent on the other side of the screen. Because they cannot deal with a Trisbana at that point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Masquerina, very strong. Uh, wouldn't cut it for anything, really. Unicorn is literally just the only target off of IP, which you want to summon. Yeah, it, it's strong. It's a, the reason they're in basically every extra deck at the moment anyway, and have been for a while. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, even cool. just as a, Even just as a follow-up play, uh, say if you haven't got the nicest hand or you try and play around Nibiru, Normal summon tour guide, summon Skarm, go into Verte, go into Dragoon, that's your fourth summon. Um, Skarm search tour guide in end phase. Next turn, uh, you just go into, if they clear everything, you're down to a tour guide, you can make uh, IP Beatrice, and by turn three, you've had so long resources where you just win outright, mm-hmm. because they can't deal with the amount of advantage you can get off of this. Yeah. So it's actually a lot. It's it's good in in scenarios outside of what you'd normally think about because of cards like Tour Guide and stuff make it so easy to access. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Link Spider. Uh, it's for Nibiru token and Dynamiscus, so you can make an effect monster to then summon Dragoon. Okay. <laughs> uh, Vertanaconda. Uh, yeah. Dragoon. Yeah. Um, Trisbana. Okay, so this is interesting because you're running a very back row heavy deck here. Uh, does this ever come to bite you in the ass? Uh, every time I trigger Trisbana, at most I have one trap. Okay. Uh, in most cases, I'm going one for three. And because the BAs are so bit weird in a way that their destruction effect is a trigger. Mm-hmm. I know it's a condition on the card, not an effect. Mm-hmm. So you special BA from your hand to its zone. Yeah. The BA immediately dies. Yes. Having Trispina triggers and doesn't banish the BA. That's correct, yeah. That can also be done off of Seer target Skarm. Skarm summon out to its zone. Skarm immediately kills itself, then trigger Trisbana. You clear the field and then you get in a tour guide in the end phase. Yeah, yeah. It's a neat little interaction that I think a lot of people don't realise is the way that the BAs work. They do just immediately go to the grave, but it's enough to... Because they have been summoned there, it, it triggers the card. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a pretty cool one. Um, okay, side deck. So, something interesting here, and this is something I'm not too clued up on, is a lot of people have been starting to play Dimension Shifter, but in decks like this. So, how does this work? So, against Dragon Link, occasionally against Prank Kids, against any like, big combo deck, you can just drop this and... Their turn is ended, full stop. In some cases, they can get a Heratic Seal on the field, in the Dragon Link case. They have to waste a lot of resources, but they can still do it. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole mentality around this is, 
it makes you have if you're going second it allows you to go first in a lot of cases mm -hmm. because you drop this they're not making any stupid boards and then you go okay i'm going to summon two bas going to make zeus going to clear whatever you have i'm going to set two or three cards and i'm going to see if you can play yeah or even just going shifter it means that they can only get on maybe one in piece interaction at most. Mm -hmm. uh, then just set four pass. It means that you have a turn to set up. Yeah. So it just it basically resets the game for you to the way you want it to play, rather than having to rely on you know going second being a problem and having to play through a lot. I guess this just gives you that chance. It allows you to play first, going second. Yeah. It's simplest term about it. Yeah, that makes sense. Very strong. Um, Droll Droll is Droll strong at the moment Strong Stroll I think I cited him once Yeah Yeah Like the hand traps I only used Nib once And I think that was it From the hand traps In all honesty Yeah from my experience With stuff like this Like hand traps Are a real fucking pain To have to use in decks like this But you only really side them in If you like absolutely have to Is that correct? Yes, the only time these go in is against Dragon Link, or you feel that your opponent is going to overextend to a point where they're going to get hit by Nib, which then that goes in. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I don't, I didn't use Shifter. Uh, I sided into, well, I sided into him. Didn't see Shifter. Didn't see Drill. I saw Nib once. It won me the game because my opponent overextended into it. But other than that, it didn't really do too much. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. On to our last. Well, I say two, six cards. There's two play sets here. Uh, anti spell fragrance. Um, you're not running any spells, so yeah, I guess. Yeah. This is... So this is a massive check and balance for anyone who has um, lightning storm, duster, even gets dragon link, chaos space. Their field spells. Um, prank kids. Their fusion spells. Uh, invoked variants of their fusion spells again. It just turns them off for a turn. So it means you can stabilize yourself, uh, take control of the game state, and then just push your opponent for so much just offensive force mm. that that one turn is all you need. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes complete sense. So I get I hadn't really thought about it too much like that. Whenever I think of anti spell fragrance, I'm thinking like striker and pendulums. Um, because that's really the only time I've ever needed to use it. But I guess it's probably a bit stronger than people give it credit for, especially with the amount of uh, back row hate and stuff in the format. I guess it does. It gives you time, right? Oh, yeah. Even against uh, Dark Rune or more as well. That's in a lot of people's side decks. Mm -hmm. Just doing that, drop that anti-spell. That means that your Dragoon is still going to be used and your Beatrice will still be used this turn. Yeah. And a nice interaction with anti-spell is uh, anti-spell plus looping cow cab can just... It can be such a tempo swing because mm -hmm. on your turn you bounce a spell, on their turn you bounce a spell in standby phase, say. And if you're going to set them again, your turn you're going to bounce one, their turn you can bounce one if you haven't killed them already. So they're never going to use them normal spells. Yeah, that's quite a nice touch actually. Something I hadn't necessarily given too much consideration to. Mm. And Solemns, Solemns to round us off. It's judgment. If you're going first, you side it in. Uh, <laughs> deals with any card which you can be afraid of, except for, I guess, Super Poly, which isn't a big deal. If they're going um, two cards for your one Dragoon, you're happy about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and judgment just deals with evenly matched. Um, there's been many times where I've just judgmented a Prank Kid's normal summon, and it just wins the game because they have no extension after that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that makes complete sense. I fucking love Judgment, so uh, I, I I don't even need you to justify it for me. I love this card so much. Um, so yeah, again, another old school card creeping into the game again. I think Judgment's going to be around forever. It's always going to be a playable card. A hundred percent. And uh, especially in a deck like this that doesn't mind, uh, you know, setting up shop and, and protecting the castle, I guess, if, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Uh, your whole sort of game state or your whole uh, game plan with this deck is go one for one with your opponent on all their cards because all your cards go plus one, more or less. Your Graph gets another guy, your Skarm gets another guy, Seer gets another guy, Badjack gets you two cards, 
it just gives you so much advantage where you just overpower your opponent um, with things like Dragoon and Beatrice because they just keep on giving you so much value. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, well, I think that pretty much rounds us off. So, uh, firstly, before we go anywhere, thank you very much for taking the time to share the list with me. I really appreciate you reaching out and and uh, offering this up to me uh, for a nice video. Congratulations on your good finish, of course. Any any mentions you'd like to make? Any shout-outs, anything like that? All good, man. Any time. Uh, one big shout-out I want to give is to Gabriel Vargas. Um, he was the main creator of this deck. Uh, got some advice from him through his streams. Uh, and if it wasn't for Gabe, who topped the last remote duel uh, qualifier in the US, uh, this deck wouldn't be looking like this, and I probably wouldn't have topped. Yeah. So, praise be upon him, Gabriel Vargas. <laughs> very, very good player. Very good deck deck builder as well. Uh, 100%. That group of guys are insane. Okay, well, uh, that's all from us, I think, then. In that case, we'll leave it off there. Again, once again, thank you very much for coming along. Uh, for you guys who are watching behind the screen, make sure you hit subscribe on this channel, and make sure you check out Kian's channel as well and show him some love as well. He's always posting tons of BA content, so if you're a avid BA player, you should definitely check that out and get tons of tips. Uh, normally, you do gameplay. Is that correct? Yeah, so I stream on Twitch as well, and I take a lot of my games from Twitch, put them on to YouTube, uh, into match episodes, as well as I do occasional like educational uh, videos for Bernie Biss. I did a in-depth uh, Dragon Link guide where these are the sort of choke points you'd use certain cards at, depending on the game state. Mm -hmm. um, and just basically trying to get people into this deck because it is absolutely fantastic, but you need to know what you're doing to actually use it properly. Yeah, it's a lot of practice, this one. It's very... Honestly, I think... In a lot of ways, um, I've always likened it to like a modern day uh, goat deck. You've got to you've got to use your resources very well, uh, and if you don't, if you overcommit, you just lose. One hundred percent. If one mistake can cost you the game instantly with this deck, so you have to play perfect. Dragoon gives you a crutch, but that crutch can only take you so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, so. Um... As a quick note as well, one more before we do go. There will be a link that I'll pop down in the comments as well. There is a Facebook group that I've set up for Burning Abyss, which Keen is very, very active in. I see him posting there all the time. Get the little notifications popping up on my phone. So you'll be able to see his content on there as well. But definitely check out the links that I'll pop down in the description for all of his content as well. So once again, thank you very much for coming along. Thank you again, Kean, for coming along and sharing the list. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one.